Illmatic. Enter the Wu-Tang 36 chambers. Ready to die. The Chronic. Doggy style. These are just a few truly recognizable classic albums from the world of hip-hop. It doesn't matter where you're from in the world, if you like rap music then you will know them very well. As far as grime music goes there are a few albums we in the UK recognize as classics. The one that sticks out in particular that is rarely ever debated is Dizzy Rascal's Boy in Da Corner. One of the first grime albums to be embraced and commercially accepted, it won the Mercury Prize in 2003. It not only caused a ruckus at home, it made a bit of a stir stateside with publications such as Rolling Stone and The Village Voice penning favorable reviews. It also received a Metacritic score of 92 out of 100, which translates to universal acclaim. I can remember visiting friends in the US in 2004 and being asked by them to bring some UK hip-hop music with me. Packing in my suitcase a few CDs, this was way before hosting sites made it easy to send digital files at the click of a button. Aside from Dizzy's album I think I also packed Mark B. Blades, The Unknown, The Street's original pirate material, T.Y.'s Upwards and maybe a Tim Westwood compilation. Feeding them the music upon my arrival, none of it stuck, not even the artists that were more rap than grime. At the time I did and he really think anything of it. I was always more a fan of American hip-hop music than UK simply because it was more accessible so I was just excited to be in the country that birthed the culture I loved at the height of the explosive mixtape era dominated at that time by 50 Cent and Gun It. However, I did always have a love for Dizzy's album and The Streets album and recognized them both as important moments in music, regardless of origin. So when Dizzy started being name-checked by US artists, and even being featured on records by them, check out UGK's Two Types of Bitches, it brought a smile to my face. But Dizzy seemed to be the only one that ever really translated from the early days of grime, and even then sales of Boy and Da Corner in the US only reached 58,000 by 2007. More recently grime has become a little more transcendent, thanks mostly to the help of social media and both hip-hop juggernauts Drake and Kanye West. But it's not the music that's caught the attention of those across the pond, it's the culture, it's the way of life. Growing up on a British council estate has become an attractive way of life to the youth of America. Whether it was Kanye West's 2015 Brit Awards performance where he brought out the who's who of grime on stage with him, Diddy's recruiting of Skepta for the Hello Good Morning remix, or Canadian Drake's endless gushing over Channel 4's Top Boy and his relentless support of Skepta and BBK, grime culture is the new cool. Also, last year famed American hip-hop podcaster Combat Jack visited UK shores to interview Kano in front of a live audience, which he then put out as an episode of his popular Combat Jack show platform. Educating listeners on the beginnings of the culture, the music and much more, it further proved grime culture's appeal to US audiences. But again, the music ISNT translating. Currently there are no grime. Artists on the Billboard Hot 100 chart or the Billboard 200 album chart. Yet in the UK there are at least 20 artists that fall under the category of grime in the official singles chart top 100 and there's at least 6 in the official albums chart top 100. And before you say it it's got absolutely nothing to do with the fact UK music in general doesn't translate. The days of UK artists struggling to break the US market are long gone. Ed Sheeran, Idell, Sam Smith, Liam Payne, Niall Horan, James Arthur, Zayn Malik, Liam Gallagher, these are all names currently featured on the Billboard charts. So why is grime music not crossing over many attributed to the rapid-fire BPMs? Grime music, while a child of hip-hop, is still deep-rooted in garage and dance music, which is predominantly up-tempo. But then you could argue that Americans don't discount their own double-time rappers. Tech and Nine Nay, Twista, Ludacris, Mystical, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Da Brat, Do or Die, Busta Rhymes, the list is endless. Could the real reason be more to do with lyrical content coming to light in the past year? It seems Americans aren't too privy to our slang. One of the biggest records of the year is Drake's KMT featuring Giggs. Now while Giggs ISNT a Gram MC he's definitely a representative of the Gram culture. After Drake's More Life project dropped earlier this year the internet took to making memes and videos poking fun at Giggs slang and delivery. Using muskets and Fisher-Price recording equipment and memes to joke about his verse, fun was also made out of his line could've just slapped man, but he wanted it further why Batman, Banana Donna. The funny thing about that now however is that the biggest meme of the year is Big Shaq's Mons Not Hot Freestyle. Trending worldwide, the parody Roadman character created by comedian Michael DePa is supposed to represent a struggling grime artist. And while Americans made fun of it when it first went viral they also embraced it in a big way. 
I even had US artists hitting me up asking if Big Shaq was a real MC and whether the freestyle should be taken seriously. So, Americans were happy to bag on a real artist but celebrate a parody artist while it doesn't particularly make sense it has been helping to push the culture forward. Michael Depa even appeared as Big Shaq at this year's Bet Awards in Miami and was embraced with open arms by everyone, including Big Tigger who let him spit a verse in the Insta booth. Maybe someone in the UK needs to drop a big alabonics type record to educate the masses on our slang and terminologies. Now that really could be something in my mind the one artist who might be able to break the musical barrier is Stormzy. He has the personality to be super marketable stateside, something I don't believe Skatba has. Stormzy is approachable. He's the guy that can sit in on chat shows with Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, James Corden, Stephen Colbert, and all the rest of them. But of course we're not talking about grime culture breaking through, we're talking about the music. So forget Stormzy's marketing value for a second, his music is much more accessible and his lyrical delivery is easily understood. And while of course he is still very much an ambassador for grime music and therefore he creates with up-tempo BPMs in mind, it's not all he does. Some of his music steps away from the stereotypical grime output. Blinded by Your Grace PT.1 and PT.2 hears him flex his vocal capabilities, something you don't often hear a grime artist do. On Cigarettes Kush he teams up with Bay Area starlet Kelani to offer up what can best be described as a love story framed in rap with some RB brushstrokes. Then listening to 100 Bags, Don't Cry For Me and Lay Me Bare, you could hear Drake making the same types of heartfelt and profound tracks. They'd be at home on albums like Take Care and Nothing Was The Same. Not only that, he collaborated with Linkin Park on a song that features on their latest album. Linkin Park, they're one of the biggest selling American rock bands of all time. So with that said, why couldn't Stormzy break America? Still to this day I'm asked by every American artist I work with to tell them who they should be listening to from the UK. While the majority of the music goes in one ear and comes out the other and ISNT really loved and revered the way US music is here, it's just great to be constantly asked. From a personal standpoint the frequency of inquiries has more than quadrupled since the birth of grime. It's great to finally have a recognizable culture we can call our own that other countries and cultures want to be a part of. But as far as grime music goes, Drake can continue to quote all the UK TV shows he likes and speak all the patois he wants, I'm not convinced it will ever be a big deal in the States. But I do think certain artists will break through and I believe the music they make will break free of the conventional creative restraints and challenge what grime sounds like in the future. In Focus is a series celebrating Black History Month 2017. Stay tuned for articles throughout the month of October.